everyone, my name's Jo and today I'm going to be talking about the fast fashion industry and labour rights violations. If you haven't been living under a rock then you probably would have heard about the latest Boohoo scandal. After an undercover investigation, the Sunday Times revealed that Boohoo had been conducting illegal practices in factories in Leicester. Garment workers were being paid between £3.50 to £4 per hour and they were given no protective equipment for COVID-19 prevention. At the same time, the fashion retailer's new bonus scheme planned to pay up to 150 million to its top executives and founders. However, this is only the tip of the iceberg, as it's estimated that 97% of high street brands' clothing is imported from overseas. Around one in six people in the world work in the global fashion supply chain, and roughly 85% of that is made up of women. As the UK ultra fast fashion industry is growing rapidly per year, let's look at the implications this is having on garment workers around the world. In this video, I'm only going to be focusing on the social cost of the industry. However, it has to be remembered that the clothing industry is the second biggest polluter in the world. And so the environmental damage the industry is causing also contributes to a ton of social issues as well. As the Times exposed, Boohoo had been violating many labour rights of its workers. As the UK has a legal structure to try and combat these violations, the UK is able to hold Boohoo accountable for its actions. However, it's a bit tricky when it comes to the UK's responsibility for labour rights overseas. According to War and Want, the UK government has only supported purely voluntary initiatives for improving the rights of overseas workers. There is little regulation conducted by the government on how UK brands treat workers overseas. And without this monitoring, this is where labour rights violations can occur. Over recent decades, the garment industry has grown to meet the demand for more clothing at cheaper prices. With the growth in retail intelligence data, brands became able to monitor upcoming trends from fashion designers to social media influencers to then put into production and into stores within a matter of weeks. Yet for Zara and H&M, the two largest global fast fashion retailers, they have found themselves in competition with online only brands. From Boohoo to Misguided, they've managed to speed up their ability to get product from concept to sale within one to two weeks. According to Human Rights Watch, while the demand for inexpensive clothing at a faster rate grows even bigger, brands themselves fuel unauthorised subcontracts and factories non-compliance with international labour standards and local labour laws. As fast fashion brands do not own the factories where they get their garments made, they ultimately do not hold responsibility for how their workers are treated or how much they get paid. However, their demand for lower prices and quicker turnarounds can often lead factories to lower the wages and increase the hours of their workers contravening their labour rights. Ultimately, this leaves brands in full control of the situation, but it leaves them out of having to hold any accountability for workers' rights. A really good example of this power dynamic was seen after the collapse of the Rana Plaza factory in 2013. This incident killed 1,138 people. It was notably one of the worst industrial accidents and it generated huge widespread attention. As a result, Bangladesh rose their garment workers' living wages. However, the BBC reported that fashion companies started sourcing elsewhere to keep costs low, taking work away from Bangladesh. As a result, this creates a situation in which factories and governments have a choice of two evils. Either they continue allowing for low wages and extreme hours to continue keeping fast fashion brands coming to them, or they respect labour rights and potentially lose interest from brands. And so let's look at what implications this is having on garment workers around the world. According to Fashion Revolution, the garment industry is and always has been one of the most female dominated industries in the world. There holds the argument that the fast fashion industry is providing millions of women with economic opportunities. However, the real question is whether this is female economic empowerment or exploitation. It's believed that the reason that so many women are in the industry stems from discrimination. 
While men only represent 15% of the industry, they usually hold higher authority positions, whereas women usually only have access to lower paid work. Fashion Revolution believe that factory owners take advantage of their female employees to form an even cheaper, more docile and flexible workforce. Women are also frequently subjected to verbal, physical and sexual abuse at work. In 2018, Global Labour Justice stated that they had recorded reports of abuse and threats of abuse as a direct result of pressure from quick turnarounds and low overheads. In India, with 60% of its 45 million garment workers being women, it was reported that one in seven garment workers had been raped or abused, and over 60% of women had been intimidated or threatened with violence. While trade unions are extremely empowering for workers, especially Especially for women, Fashion Revolution has reported numerous cases where people have faced violence and threats of abuse for being members of or trying to start a union. Women are also often not granted maternity leave if they become pregnant. Many factories will only hire unmarried women without children and according to the Clean Clothes campaign, it was reported that women have been made to sign an agreement that they will not have children during their employment. In conclusion, the demand for cheaper prices, quicker turnarounds and bigger variety made by brands can result in factories committing labour rights violations. However, without full transparency from brands, we cannot know the extent to which labour rights violations have been being committed around the world. Let's cut the bullshit. Fast fashion brands are fully aware that their requirements result in labour rights violations. However, they've been allowed to escape through legal loopholes to let these violations continue without consequence. While the Boohoo story caused serious outrage, this is just a small drop in the ocean. The Guardian recently reported that virtually the entire fashion industry is complicit in Uyghur forced labour, as brands have been using the cotton produced in these camps for their garments. These Uyghur camps are some, one of the largest internments of an ethnic and religious minority since the Second World War, and there have been huge reports of forced labour and human rights violations. On the other hand, without the industry, millions would be without work, and the industry does contribute significantly to many developing countries' GDPs. I believe it's really important to listen to the voices of garment workers themselves, as they are often left out of the debate. We also have the capacity to demand action from the UK government to provide legal structures that will help regulate brands' actions overseas. As Madonna said, I am a material girl in a material world. However, the price of a t-shirt should never be prioritised over the rights of a human being.